everyone and welcome to the first how to get into vet school webinar that's being presented by the class of 2022 here at the University of Florida College of Veterinary Medicine. Um, I'm Rachel Mester and I am the current class president of the class of 2022. I'm currently a third year and I hope that when I am a big girl vet that I'll be a small animal um, and exotics general practice <laughs> veterinarian. We are so happy to have you all here to share our experiences with applying to vet school and being in vet school because um, we want to help you, you know, get make it to your dreams. This event will be recorded and available after if you'd like to share it with anyone or if you would like to rewatch it. And we also have closed captions available down on the right. If you hit closed caption and show script, then you'll be able to, you know, read along with us. We are going to start out with a short intro video from Dr. Chris Sanchez, who is our Intern Associate Dean of Clinical Sciences. So we'll get that right up. Hi everybody, welcome to our first ever virtual pre-vet advising session. My name is Chris Sanchez. I am the Interim Associate Dean for Clinical Services here at the College of Veterinary Medicine. That's a super long title, meaning that I am in charge of the whole vet hospital here, small and large, and the diagnostic labs. I'm a proud Gator vet myself. I graduated from the College of Veterinary Medicine in 1995. And I'm a long time Gator before then. I went to undergrad here and was a member of the Gator Band, a proud member of the uh, tenor saxophone line way back in the day and then went to vet school here. I did an equine um, internship in private practice in, out in Oklahoma and then came back here to do a residency in large animal internal medicine and uh, also did a PhD here and so I'm a, a, I'm a, a gator through and through and then I've been on faculty here at the college since 2003. During today's content, you're gonna hear some great tips from our pre-vet advisors in the Office of Academic and Student Affairs here at the college. And then there's gonna be a panel from, with a question and answer session kind of from our vet students here that are gonna give you insight into how they got here and uh, some tips on how you can join us. We're so excited to have you here virtually and really hope to see you here in person at some point in the future. So thanks so much for joining in. We hope you find this session helpful and go Gators. So that was a great video from Dr. Sanchez. And now I'm going to introduce Alex Avellino, who is our Student Affairs Program Coordinator, who's going to give you a little PowerPoint about what UF has to offer as a vet school. Well, thanks so much, President Rachel. I am so happy to be here this morning with everybody. You know, it could be early for some of us. So before we even start, can everybody just please put their right hand over their left hand and give me one strong gator chomp. Everybody at home, I can't see you, but I can feel you doing it on the count of three. One, two, three. Okay, go gators. Let's begin. Okay, I'm going to help you know a little bit about what UF has to offer, what we're up to, and we'll chat briefly about how you can come to vet school here. But just keep in mind, everybody's journey is different. You might be in middle school right now, high school, college, or non-traditional. So it really is about your personal journey. And I recommend looking at all of our resources online to figure out how you can best navigate your way, way here. So we'll speak in generalities today a little bit. Okay, when you are choosing a vet school, of course UF is gonna be your number one. But if you're thinking about vet schools to choose in general, one thing you can think about is the physical location of the school. Where is it? What does the town have to offer? What is the weather like? So we are located in Gainesville, Florida, which is North Central Florida. I put on the map for you airports. The reason why that is important, if you're an out of state student, you wanna make sure you can get the friends and family quickly. And there are lots of airports near UF. And that's not the case for every vet school. So it really is a wonderful location if you're an out of state student. Then I also put the beach on there. So you might think Florida and you're like, oh, I wanna to get to the beach and it's about 90 minutes away. You know why this is really great? It means while you're studying for exams in vet school, you're not worried about hurricanes because we are far enough inland where, knock on wood, we really don't get bothered by them too much. We also live in a college town, which is great because there's tons of free events. There's always something going on. We're a big sports school. So if you enjoy going to sports and just the college life and the college atmosphere, UF is a great place for you. 
Uh, now let's just briefly talk about the weather. If you like the heat, you are gonna be very happy here. So if you're from the North and we do have some students on our panel today who either are from the North or have family from the North and it's a big difference for them, but I think a lot of them really like it. And you know why it's great? It means we can be outside all year long. So you can find us in December outside playing volleyball, staying safe by wearing our masks and staying six feet apart, but it's a really great location to go to vet school. Okay, now everyone who's listening, I think we know that vet school is very competitive, right? There just aren't a ton of vet schools in the country. There aren't a lot of opportunities. We are the only vet school in the state of Florida. So every year we have 130 seats for you. I do like to tell folks that it's competitive, so we're staying realistic. So this year of our applicants, 7% were admitted of the ones who applied. So what that means is it's okay to reapply. You're gonna hear from one of our panels today who reapplied and they're gonna tell you that it is totally normal, totally natural, and your time off can actually be a huge blessing. So just know that when you apply, you have 30 seats that you're going for. 94 are state sponsored. That means Florida residents, so state sponsored residents have more opportunities. So here's a tip. If you choose a vet school that's your number one, think about moving to that state to gain residency because you're gonna have more seats available to you. I know quite a few vet students who applied multiple times to Florida as out of state students and they kept getting denied. Then they choose, chose to move here. And then when they got Florida residency, they did get in because they just had a wider pool available to them. So for all of my out of state students who are listening right now, keep in mind that gaining residency is a strategy to help you get into vet school a little bit sooner. UF has a lot of wonderful opportunities and some of them are on the right of your screen. So we do have a combined MPH DVM program, which means you can get your master's of public health at the same time you're getting your doctor of veterinary medicine degree. You, we also have four certificate programs. Certificates are like minors. So if you're in college right now and you're minoring in economics or business or fine arts, you could be minoring in vet school in aquatic animal health or food animal medicine. So we have these specialized programs to help you really hone in on your particular interests. If you wanna learn more about the programs and the certificates, I go over them in our podcast. So if you haven't listened to it, it's called the Pre-Vet Pausecast. And if you listen, you'll learn a lot more tips about coming to UF, going to vet school and figuring out what kind of veterinarian you wanna be. So now we're gonna talk about numbers. I want everyone to take a deep breath while they look at this screen because sometimes numbers freak us out. We feel like, oh no, how am I measuring up? We're comparing ourselves to others. Listen, you can do this. You can go to vet school. It might take a little bit longer or it might not be the path you thought it was gonna be, but you can get there. So everything on your screen is very much them cast related. Everybody at home, go ahead and say them cast. It's V-M-C-A-S. That is the application portal that you're going to use to apply to most of your vet schools. And it really is, it comes down to a lot of text, right? It's not the interview process. It's all of the numbers. It's all of your essays. It's your letters of recommendation. So on the screen are the current GPA averages. And this is on a four point scale. So if you're listening in from high school right now, college does not do a weighted GPA. So on a four point scale, my students in the vet school are between a three, five, six, and a 368 for their three GPAs. That is quite competitive. You know, these guys are superstars. They really um, worked hard in undergrad. We really need students who are skilled in the sciences. So make these your goal. If you don't reach these, that's okay. You can still apply, but these numbers are the goal. For veterinary experience, we are looking for variety, diversity, consistency, and hands-on quality experience and mentorships from veterinarians. So if you're in high school and you're not 18 yet and you can't work with a vet, go ahead and start shadowing, try and volunteer, start going to barns and getting your hands on some large animals. We would love to see small animal general clinical experience. We would love to see equine experience. If you think you wanna do exotics, go get that exotic experience. Everyone wants to know what kind of experience helps them stand out. I would worry less about standing out and more about showing that you are ready. How do you show you're ready? 
by working in a practice, hopefully getting paid in a practice. If you're from a state that doesn't make you have to get certified to be a vet tech or a vet assistant, try and get some paid experience. Um, but really those le that letter of rec from a veterinarian is gonna show us that you got the best experience possible. So speaking of letters of rec, what does UF wanna see? Well, VEMCAS makes you turn in three letters of rec. You actually can turn in up to six. I think six is a lot to ask for students to turn in. We are happy with three or four. With the letters of rec, you definitely wanna have a strong one from a veterinarian someone who knows you well, who's worked with you for a long time, who really, really likes you and supports you. Then your other letters can come from coaches, employers, other veterinarians, folks who you've worked with who know you well, no family members. So start thinking about who can write these letters. You want people who are really enthusiastic. And then when you ask them, you wanna say, do you feel comfortable writing me a strong letter of recommendation? That way you'll feel confident that they're gonna write you a really great letter. So a little bit more about what Florida has to offer you. Our curriculum is pretty neat. So that's what you're seeing on the left hand of your screen. So for the first two years, you are in didactic courses, which basically means sitting in lectures, you'll be doing some clinical skills, you'll be doing anatomy. But when you are a sophomore in the summer, you get to put on your white coat and then start working in the hospital which is really cool because a lot of vet schools don't allow you to do that until your fourth year. So then once you become that sophomore and you put on your white coat, you're gonna do a combination of elective courses and clinical rotation. And it's really great because it helps students not to burn out from any one particular area. Then on the right, you're seeing our research scholars program. So if you're interested in research, we have a built-in program for students where they can get signed up with a faculty mentor and do their own research. But if you're interested in research, you can be doing it throughout your entire vet school curriculum. You're, you don't necessarily have to do this program, but it really shows how invested the faculty are with our students. The faculty have great relationships with them. They really support our DVM students. So when you come here, you really do feel like you have strong support from everyone. A little bit about diversity, equity, and inclusion. So we have two groups on campus that really push for inclusion and events and understanding and awareness. And that comes from our student group, which is valid. And then we have a student faculty and staff group, which is our diversity and inclusion committee. And both groups work together to present a culture of inclusion for everybody at the vet school. We really want to hear from each lived experience. We wanna hear from each person. We want people to feel like they have a voice and that they're comfortable on this campus. To that end, what we created for pre-vet students is underrepresented no more which is a website of opportunities, of information. It's basically a one-stop shop for pre-vets to have everything laid out on one website. So that is urnm.org. And we really put special focus and highlight on underrepresented student stories. And it's for everybody because as a pre-vet, when you're at home, go ahead and raise your hand if everybody around you in your biology classes or your chemistry classes are pre-med or pre-dental or pre-pharmacy or pre-nursing. My guess is you might feel like a minority in those health classes and you're not alone. So this website is for everyone. Okay, now, wherever you are, make use of the resources that you have available to you in middle school, high school, and college. And then when you get to vet school, you're gonna have these resources at your fingertips once again. We have a career counselor who makes sure that students know how to negotiate their salary, write a resume, great opportunities to build up their resume while in vet school. And then we allow you to do some professional school networking across the street with med students, dental students, pharmacy students. Uh, and we have a financial counselor who's here to help you understand your debt. And I hope everybody knows that it can be pretty pricey to go to vet school. So that's something you wanna think about. And then she is here to help you understand how to pay back your loans. What even is a loan? She'll help you understand that. Uh, we have more than 27 clubs on campus for you to get involved and feel connected and have just opportunities to grow. Um, as a future veterinarian. And then we have two wellness counselors. They are here to ensure that students have touch points throughout their curriculum to make sure that they're doing well. Vet school is a lot, life is a lot, and students are doing vet school and their own life at the same time. So we make sure that everyone has resources. We do an event every semester for each class. We want everyone to know that it's okay to talk about our feelings and emotions. Um, so they are there to help with that. And that's involved in our entire wellness curriculum. 
So what I'm going to leave you with is UF Vet Med at a glance. Hopefully when you see, the, and I do want to say these are all pre-COVID. However, the energy and excitement is still running through our veins and through our halls. Um, hopefully you see this and you think fun, you think community, you think outdoorsy activities, and you just think memories that when you come to UF, you're going to build strong friendships, great memories, and hopefully they'll be my students' best four years of their lives. I'm happy to talk to anybody who thinks they'd like to come to UF. My contact info is on the screen. You can shoot me an email. You can give me a phone call. If you find that you're writing your entire life story in an email, I'm going to have you call me. So feel free to call at any time and we can set up an appointment for you. So thanks so much for y'all's attention and go Gators. Thank you, Alex, so much. Let's everyone give her a round of applause through Zoom for that awesome presentation. And thank you so much for taking time out of your Saturday to come present to our How to Get into Vet School webinar. So now we are going to move on to the panel portion of this event. So I'm going to introduce the six panelists that we have today from the class of 2022. We are all third year, so we've done courses, we've done clinics already, and now we are back in our elective classes and we are actually able to um, take classes more towards large animal or more towards small animal now, which is really awesome. So let's go ahead and let's get started with Devon, who will introduce himself first. Hello, everyone. Um, so yes, my name is Devon Mims. Um, I'm actually Rachel's vice president. Very proud of that. Very proud to serve our Madam President here today and always. Um, I am actually one of our few concurrent uh, Doctor of Veterinary Medicine and Master of Public Health students that Alex mentioned, one of two in our class. Um, and prior to that, I actually also completed an undergraduate degree here at the University of Florida. Um, I uh, graduated in 2018 with a Bachelor's of Science in Zoology and a minor in Disability Studies. Um, I'm originally from uh, the, the Tampa area. Um, however, I was born in the Bronx uh, and I was up north until I was about six years old. I say water um, and I really cling to my northern New York heritage. Um, absolutely. Um, aside from that, a little uh, bit about me. I'm um, very proud to, you know, uh, claim many intersectional identities. Um, I'm a Black, Latina, queer, first generation dude in our class, um, one of few people who can claim all those labels. Um, so I'm, I'm, you know, excited to be able to reinforce uh, what I am as a vet student with some unique lived experience. Um, and that kind of uh, plays into exactly what I want to do with the rest of my life. Um, so recognizing how our own individual circumstances and human circumstances in general intersect with health inequity, both for people and their pets. Um, I really want to engage in sort of academic primary and preventive medicine, uh, community health practice, uh, health inequities and justice centered advocacy and like the gold standard of what could happen for me in the future. I would actually work at a university um, at a College of Veterinary Medicine's primary care service able to engage in some public health practice work while also just doing great medicine for our community. Um, and I believe Sarah Beth is up next. And just before Sarah starts, we are going to put up a quick poll um, in this webinar so we can get to learn more about you guys or viewers. So if you want to take a minute to answer those poll questions, that would be great. And Sarah, you can go ahead and start to introduce yourself. Sounds good. So my name is Sarah Beth Spizak. Um, my goal after vet school is to do mixed animal general practice. And so in a perfect world, I would be seeing about 50% small animal patients in a clinic and about 50% uh, large animal patients out on the road. Um, so like many, I have wanted to be a vet since I was about six years old um, and I've never wanted to be anything else. And so it just felt like an eventuality. It felt like something that would always happen. Despite that feeling like an eventuality, it took me um, a lot of work and it took me four application cycles to get into vet school. And now I'm here. Um, so briefly, my first two application cycles were right out of undergrad. I did go to undergrad here at UF. Um, I got a bachelor's of animal science with an animal biology concentration. Um, and I 
applied to a lot of schools in that first, those first two applications. And so I barely had time to even focus on the individual applications, especially because there's the big VimCAS application that Alex spoke about, but then most schools also have an individual supplemental application. And I was really in over my head. I spent a lot of money um, and I did a lot of work and I was not offered a single interview out of any of those applications. So someone in my life who was very smart suggested I look into a second degree to boost my GPA, which was less than stellar out of undergrad, um, and just boost my experience before applying to vet school again. So I did a master's degree in public health at USF. Um, I skipped the application cycle when I was in the middle of that two-year program and applied to vet school for my third time during my final year. In that cycle, I applied to something like three or four schools. Um, by that point, UF was my top choice, but um, I still wanted to kind of have a buffer without going too crazy. I had learned from my mistakes in the first rounds. Um, that, so that third cycle I applied, I was offered an interview at UF. I was so excited um, to get the chance to interview. I studied the process. I looked up questions I would expect to get asked. I lived on the message boards on Student Doctor Network, which I recommend checking out if you're applying to vet school. Um, and I practiced, practiced, practiced. I went and bought a whole new interview outfit. I kept practicing and I really like drilled the questions that I was gonna get asked. The interview was so nerve wracking and I felt really awkward. I didn't feel like myself. Um, I didn't really vibe with my interviewers that time around. Um, and I was asked about one of the current sort of topics in vet med at the time and I got some kind of key facts wrong. And so it just wasn't the best experience. When I left that interview, I was pretty sure I didn't get in and I was right. Um, the time period between my third and fourth application cycles was really introspective for me. I realized that I had poured everything that I had into becoming the perfect candidate for that first interview at vet school, um, and I had failed. I listened to every episode of another podcast that I recommend. It's called Vet School Unleashed, Dissecting the DVM. And I realized that vet students, they're not picture perfect cutouts. They're just themselves and they have their own unique story. And so I spent the time between my third and fourth application cycle focusing on learning to tell my unique story. My fourth application cycle, I only applied to UF. It's my top choice, only place I wanted to go. I think I told them that in one of my essays, I said something to the effect of, if you don't let me in this time, I'm just gonna keep applying. Um, rather than drill my answers to interview questions like I had the first time around, I took some of the more introspective ones and I just really thought about them, found my truth, even if it wasn't the picture perfect answer. So that last interview, uh, it went fantastic. I vibed with my interviewers. I cracked some jokes. One of the questions was um, asking me to describe a time that I handled, I was nervous, but handled a difficult situation well. And I said, I think this interview counts for sure. It cracked everybody up and we all had a great time. I left that interviewer uh, interview sure that I had gotten in. A few months later, I got an email that said I was waitlisted. It's a little bit of a punch in the gut. Um, I made the mistake of reading it at work and I was like a ball of nervous energy the whole rest of the day. But in a happy ending to this very long story, a few months later, I got a phone call and I was pulled off the wait list and now I'm here and I couldn't be any happier. So that's my story. Okay, hey guys. Um, my name is Joey Fregal. I'm originally from New York. I didn't know I always wanted to be a veterinarian. I didn't like, when I was a little kid, I wasn't like, oh, I wanna work with animals. And I was playing like doctor with my dog or anything like that. Um, I went to John Jay College of Criminal Justice for undergrad where I majored in forensic molecular biology. I did research um, while I was in undergrad for um, two and a half years in a forensic entomology lab. And I loved what I was doing. I actually got to do, had like some, very mild veterinary experience when I had worked with the ASPCA for one of the cases that we were assigned. Um, but my goal in undergrad was to go to medical school. And I thought that I was gonna become a forensic pathologist and do all this crime work. And I loved uh, what I was studying and what I was doing, but a part of me was like, um, you know, there, there's an, a way to combine your, your passion of animals, which I did have, but it was something that I guess I was in pursuing with what I was doing. And so um, before I started to study for my MCAT, I was like, let me go ahead and just volunteer in an animal clinic and see how I like it. And so that was actually my, it was like the start of the spring semester of my third year. So I, VEMCAS would have been closing in September. So I had like only maybe like six or seven months to actually get prepared for it. So I started um, working uh, in the animal clinic. I was literally sweeping the floors and just like asking questions all the time and like cleaning kennels. Um, but 
I realized that I, I really did like what I was doing. And so then I kind of like had this moment where I had to like have a conversation with myself, like, do you want to be a human doctor or do you want to be a doctor for animals? And so I decided and I kind of spoke with my family and everything. And either way, they supported me, which always kind of makes everything a little easier. Um, but I decided that I was going to be a doctor for animals. I was going to uh, try to be a veterinarian. And so then like the next shock was like, wow, I have so little time to uh, prepare for this application that people like spend their entire lives doing. And I was like, I only have six months to do this. And so I was still doing research. I had extremely long hours with my um, major that I was in. And I spent probably every weekend from when I decided that I was gonna go to veterinary school to actually applying, like literally like the last application, I was just adding those hours on. Um, and I, uh, I get, so from there, I finished my application after working all those long hours. And I focused on the research that I had done and the practice that I was in, uh, saw small animals and exotics. And so that actually gave me some pretty good diversity in the animals that I was seeing. Um, and then I started the interview process. I had an uh, interview with Tufts, um, which felt good and I, I liked it there. And I had actually gone in and then I had an interview with UF here. and. Um, my interview felt like it went really well and it was awesome. And then all of a sudden I had gotten an email and I was like, oh, this is it. Hopefully this is it. And I got waitlisted. And kind of like what Sarah Beth said, it's a little bit in the punch of the gut. And but for me, what that meant is all of my classes had actually prepared me for um, veterinary school. I was wasn't necessarily tracking pre-med, but the courses that I was taking had set me up for that, except I was missing molecular biology. And so I actually had to take molecular biology and what of the classes that I need to graduate. So my time, then they were at the same time, but I ended up being able to take both of them. And then I got a phone call. I remember I was in the bathroom, I got the phone call, I was about to brush my teeth and I saw the Gainesville area code. I like threw the, the toothbrush down, answered the phone call. And they were like, hey, a seat opened up and it's yours if you want it. And I was like, yes, I'll take it. And now I'm in my third year and I definitely don't regret any of the decisions that I've made. And I think I'll be passing it on to Diney next. Hi guys, my name is Diney Ferreira. I am from Miami, originally from Cuba. My pre journey, I think is pretty like the classic journey that you think of when um, you think of applying to vet school. I got my bachelor's in biology with a minor in chemistry. I was in the honors college, kind of like pretty basic stuff. Uh, what I think kind of set me apart though, was that I worked full time as a technician and did school full time all four years of undergrad. So that definitely set me up on the right track for when vet school started. I kind of was used to not having a lot of time and dealing with um, having to study really efficiently, which comes in handy when we have like three exams in one week. So uh, that's fun. Uh, that was uh, a difficult time, but it was also something that I was like able to to cap on and talk about in my interview um, and just really like set me up for success and for good tools that like I now use for study. So. Now in vet school, I am very, well, and since before as well, I've always been very interested in fitness and working out. And that was actually my biggest fear coming into vet school was that I wouldn't have time for those things that are so important to me, just because you hear all the time how rigorous the program is. And I will tell you that there is enough time for the things that you love and, and what's important to you just depends on what you um, prioritize. Uh, right now, I uh have written during quarantine a wellness guide that i sold online and a couple of our classmates bought so that was pretty cool to get that support from our from our classmates and i have also uh done personal training with some of our our classmates and also have uh done like some side gigs to make some extra money so i have very much kept busy now even in vet school and although Having a job is not for everybody at all. It can, it can get difficult, but uh, I just thrive on being busy, I guess. And it works out well for me. So I am tracking small animal and I'm also doing our business certificate. If you can't tell, I like money. So that is where that uh, comes into play. When I graduate, I hope to work in emergency for some time 
and then hopefully own my own practice in the future. So that's me. Hi guys, uh, my name is Charles or Charlie uh, Tavares. I'm also a third year here at UF. I am a proud double gator in the making. I did my undergrad education here also. I honestly started kind of like similar to Joey. I did know I always wanted to be a vet growing up as a kid. Like, you know, I wasn't when I played doctor with my dog and stuff like that growing up. But then as I got older, I don't know if it's just like my immigrant parents kind of pushing me more towards like medical school versus veterinary school. And I took the MCAT. I was ready to apply to medical school. I was ready to do all that. And then I was doing research in one of the neurobiology labs here at UF in undergrad. And I called my mom being like, I really don't want to go to medical school. Like, I don't think it's for me. And she's like, stop being a baby and just apply to vet school. Because like Sarah Beth had mentioned before, I would be on student doctor network and all these things. And they can be very helpful networks for sure. But some of these like listservs can go on and tell you how difficult and competitive it is. And it is, it really is. It's tough to get in, but sometimes that can be a little discouraging. So I feel like I needed like that kick in the butt from mom to make me realize like, you know what, like if it was easy, everyone would do it. And like, it, if it's your passion, it should be a little bit of a challenge, right? So like I finally just bit the bullet and I applied, but like, it took me a while to really figure it out. And that's kind of like, my approach to this panel is like not everything happens in like a chronological order like we think it's supposed to happen like not everything goes according to plan like I took almost three years off in between undergrad and starting vet school because I wanted to make sure that if I'm committing my life to something forever and it's a very expensive commitment like I want to make sure it's something I'm going to be passionate and happy and love doing for the rest of my life so I left my research job here I went back home and I started working for a vet um, that was actually my friend's dad. And that's how I got the connection into that hospital. And being there, working there, being so hands-on, getting to see some of the amazing surgeries and procedures and like getting to learn so many like medical, like things that we do as veterinarians, it's so similar to human medicine. And people don't really like think about that a lot of the times, like as vets, we have to do what a lot of different human physicians have to do as one person. So I, I feel like that's what really help me find the true passion of that this is something that I really want to do and like commit my life to forever. And uh, along with Devon, like I'm also a Hispanic man I'm on the queer spectrum, happily proud, openly gay guy. And like, I love the culture here at UF. And like Alex had mentioned, the inclusion and diversity, everything's been great here um, at UF. So there's just a lot of, lot of things to look at when we're approaching like our um, application process and like why we're doing this. And um, what we want to follow like in our careers. I came in thinking I wanted to be a horse doctor <laughs> and you can ask a lot of my friends. Like initially I thought I wanted to do equine work. I had worked between a small and a large animal hospital back at home. Quickly realized I love horses, but I think from a distance maybe. And I, I want to do small animal general practice now. And I'm also getting the business certificate like Diane mentioned, because I would like to eventually own my own practice one day. And then I think Jay's up after me. Yes. <clears throat> hey, y'all. My name is Jay Schaub. I'm 38, which makes me the second oldest uh, student in our class. Um, I've been married for 10 years, and I have a three-year-old daughter. Um, I was born in Sarasota, Florida, but I've been living here in Gainesville or the Gainesville area um, since 2000. I earned a bachelor's in chemistry from UF in 2005. Um, and a PhD in pharmaceutical science, also from UF, um, in 2011, uh, here at the pharmacy school. Uh, my graduate research was on the effect of exercise on an obese mouse model. Um, in between undergrad and graduate school, my first time, I was a lab manager. Um, and then after I graduated with my PhD, I taught chemistry at one of the local high schools for seven years before deciding to apply to vet school. Um, it was actually five years ago um, this week that I sat up straight in bed in the middle of the night and said, I'm going to vet school. And I laid back down and I fell asleep. Um, and that led to an interesting conversation later, later that weekend with my wife, um, especially since it was also the weekend of, one of my brother's wedding. Um, so we, we talked about it, decided I was really interested in pursuing this. Um, but since I'm what my wife lovingly refers to as a non-traditional applicant, um, I met with Alex Avellino to kind of figure out um, where I was, how I kind of fit into the application process, 
Um, and really importantly for me, um, since I had done a lot of graduate work, um, to kind of figure out what which of my graduate credits also counted towards my prerequisite since, um, you know, when I was an undergraduate, I had no idea that vet school would be in my future. Um, since I was still teaching full time, um, I did all my volunteer work um, at a local vet clinic on the weekends um, and then during the summer when I was done um, and I had to finish the prerequisite classes that I was still missing. Um, I did those one at a time online um, and in the evening. Um, so my interest in vet school are uh, really almost everything. I really like small animal medicine, food animal medicine, especially beef, cattle, and small ruminants. Um, some interest in horses, um, just not competitive ones. Um, so really when I'm done, I'm hoping to have some amount or some involvement in a mixed president. Um, I was the president of the Theriogenology Club, which is for reproductive medicine. I was also an officer in the Food Animal Club. Um, the further I go in vet school, the more I inclined I am um, to pursue more of a small animal practice, more than uh, ambulatory. I'm not really interested in ambulatory practice, um, but I do live on a 25 acre farm. I have cows, uh, chickens, guinea fowls, um, you know, and I'm surrounded in the area I am by people with goats and donkeys, and horses, and cows, and all sort of other strange creatures. Um, so I, I always kind of imagine that even if my practice is you know, more focused on small animal, I'll always have some exposure to, uh, you know, other, other animals for a mixed practice. Um, and when I graduate, I do plan to stay in practice in the Gainesville area. Thank you for all of our panelists for introducing themselves. Um, we have a great panel here with a lot of diversity. You guys are having such great questions in the chat. So if we don't get a chance to answer them, please visit our website and contact us. Um, and you'll get your answers. So our first question that we have is going to be for Jay and Sarah Beth. And I just want you guys to talk about your higher education and how that prepared you for vet school. All right, so I'll go first. Um, so as I kind of briefly mentioned, I got a master's of public health in between um, my second and or in second and third, second and fourth um, times applying to vet school. Um, and it was a true blessing. I honestly went into the program just as a way to kind of boost my GPA and get some more hours. I wasn't that interested in public health when I entered it, but the program completely changed that. Um, and it made me really interested in public health. And I had a really fantastic advisor that had actually worked with multiple veterinarians that went back to get their public health degrees, as well as other pre-vet students. And he helped me really integrate um, the public health curriculum, really integrate veterinary medicine more so into that um, and really learn about the concept of one health, um, which I'm very passionate about. I believe that humans, animals, and the environment are all connected. The other thing that my MPH gave me was research experience, which I didn't have much of from undergrad. Um, I did a study at a, um, an equine hospital uh, looking at like salmonella and colic uh, horses. And um, that also through that advisor, um, kind of connections are really important, got me a volunteer job at uh, an equine hospital, which then led to me getting an actual paid veterinary technician job and got some letters of rec out of that for my vet school application. Um, so really good, just sort of, exposure to One Health, as well as research experience. And I got to show the vet school that I could do graduate level education and excel at it. Um, and I think that's a really important thing, especially if you're not getting into vet school just straight out of undergrad. So it was a huge blessing for me. Jay, I'll let you in. Thanks. Um, so I, I joke with my friends and family that my PhD is my accidental doctorate because um, it was not something I ever really intended on pursuing. It was one of, more of those things that I kind of fell into. Um, as I mentioned, I was a, a lab manager. And one day my, uh, my uh, boss called me into her office and said, all right, you either need to apply to grad school or you need to find a new job. So I applied to grad school. It worked out because I got a raise actually as a graduate student compared to uh, just working hourly. Um, and so, you know, I really transitioned into it. It was a, uh, a mixed lab with chemistry and biology. I focused more on the biology with my uh, uh, mice, um, but I did have exposure to the chemistry, um, you know, and I, I'm sure other people with uh, grad degrees can talk to this. Part of the benefit of it, um, in addition to it, just kind of makes you a little older when you apply and you kind of get used to things. 
Um, but you know, I was I'm more used to like the stress, um, you know, of, of upper level classes. I'm used to the rigor because you know I've taken graduate level classes before. Um, you know, I'm used to the long hours. My advisor expected us to put in 60 to 70 hours a week in the lab and then do additional work at home. Um, and then, uh, you know, something that doesn't come up necessarily in the classroom, but doesn't ever hurt on clinics is I've kind of got used to grumpy professors. Um, and so uh, other benefits of any graduate program, I got used to doing literature researches. I got used to reading a lot of stuff. Um, I wrote several papers that have been published in some book chapters. Um, I've done some grant writing, which is really helpful when I was involved in clubs to kind of secure funding for the clubs. Um, and then as part of my animal research, I also got kind of a preview of what we would do in grad school. You know, I was trained in aseptic technique. Um, I was trained to do some surgeries. I learned general anatomy, although it's much smaller on mice than like dogs. Um, you know, and at one point I actually did some brain surgery. Um, for the mice. So it, it's one of those things that I think, like Sarah Beth said, that it just kind of um, gives you a different perspective. Um, it's always good to have some more experience. Um, and I don't regret it. Um, you know, I kind of wish I would be graduating from vet school earlier. Um, but, you know, I, I don't think I'd be doing as well in vet school if I hadn't already had that graduate work done. Awesome. Thank you guys for giving us that information. I'm sure it's going to be useful to a lot of our viewers. Um, our next question is going to be for Charlie and Devon. And could you guys talk about your professional experiences and extracurriculars that you think help you stand out on your application? Um, I think one thing that a lot of us in vet school and all of us applying and interested in vet school, we all love animals, of course, and that's why we're going into this field and into this career. But I think one thing that we tend not to think about too much is like the human connection, uh, which is also a huge part of veterinary medicine. So for me, when I was applying, um, one of the extracurriculars that stuck out a lot and I was asked about repeatedly on multiple interviews was the fact that I volunteered at a homeless and a soup kitchen, like a homeless shelter and a soup kitchen prior to um, applying to vet school and like during the application process because I wanted it to be more of like, obviously I love animals and like I have the experience with animals, but there's something about like wanting to reach out to the homeless community who has a lot of pets also, and they need the help and the outreach. So like, that's something that I thought would be beneficial for me just because it's something that I enjoy doing. And it's something that I figured would help me stand out because it wasn't directly animal related. And I think that along with just knowing and understanding that there's still a very strong human side to veterinary medicine was something that I think extracurricularly really helped me when it came to my application. And being in vet school. Also something they asked me here at my UF interview was like, why do you think you would be a good fit for the possible incoming class? To which my answer was because I have golden retriever syndrome, which means I, you can put me in a room with any amount of strangers and I promise you I'll be friends with at least half of them by the end of the day. And I, I feel like that's another big thing. You have to remember that you have to be able to rely on your uh, your classmates and your friends and your family like it's uh, the big part for me is like always remembering the human side of veterinary medicine and I think that's a very important part that we tend to not think about or put too much weight into when we're thinking about vet school and applying so that would be one of my biggest um, tips is remembering that there's still a human side to all this animal medicine yeah I absolutely agree and echo with Charlie's um, thoughts to give uh, um, you know specific examples of, of what my experience looked like before vet school um, I spent my last two years of undergrad with my junior and, and senior year working as a surgery technician at our hospital. Um, I was involved in a lot of research, um, actually through our psychology department focused on animal behavior and canine cognition, which was a lot of fun. Um, I participated in a study abroad program um, in Belize that was actually hosted by our zoological medicine service. Um, and I was involved in a lot of other leadership activities on campus, including um, serving as an honors program ambassador, uh, serving as a Pride Awareness Month coordinator, so on and so forth. So when we're thinking about our professional experiences, I feel like typically we like to break it into, you know, animal experience, veterinary specific experience and research and leadership. And inevitably those are things that we focus on a lot. I think when we're drafting our application materials and I will tell you all that even with all those heavy animal veterinary leadership focused things, what came up in every one of my interviews 
without a doubt, what the interviewers were most interested in about me was that I wrote on my application that I was actually involved in American Sign Language programs and the deaf community in um, my own life. Um, so, so outside of anything veterinary related, I described a little bit about my experience uh, in high school, just taking American Sign Language for funsies because I didn't want to cop out and take Spanish like everyone else, um, especially being a Puerto Rican guy. Um, so I took American Sign Language in high school, got really involved in the deaf community in Tampa. When I came to UF, I actually served as a TA for our American Sign Language program. And eventually um, I was part of a group that started a community nonprofit organization that uh, focused on deaf and hard of hearing advocacy in the North Central Florida area. Um, and to me, that was like totally irrelevant to veterinary school, right? Nothing to do with animals. So I thought at that time, and 100% of the interviewers were interested in learning more about that specific involvement. And so it, it just goes to show that absolutely, you know, things that are not veterinary are relevant and important um, to vet school, even if you in that moment um, may not allot that worth. Um, now looking back and especially understanding the role, like Charlie said, that humans um, and intersectionality in general play in health outcomes for animals, um, it expands my entire idea of what veterinary medicine is. So me working with people with disabilities, working with people from uh, low socioeconomic status, working with tons of you know other facets of rural or disadvantaged or minoritized veterinary medicine makes me a stronger veterinarian. It makes me more able to connect to people and more able to provide resources for individuals who historically have not had access to those resources. And that is what my interviewers saw in me because I, you know, often chance mentioned that I do stuff with my hands in the deaf community. Um, so focusing on yourself and your experiences outside of what you think the interviewers want to hear, just like Sarah Beth said, absolutely will gain you lots of points. <laughs> um, so do that, a lot that worth um, and go for it. Yeah, I agree exactly with Charlie and Devon both said. It's something that we always talk about, um, you know, right before we're doing vet school interviews is, you know, you know, make that connection and you talk about something that like makes you different. That's not just about veterinary medicine because everyone who's applying is interested in veterinary medicine. Our next question is going to be for Diney and Joey. Um, and as we all know, vet school is known to be extremely overwhelming. Um, how do you cope with the stress and how do you manage your time accordingly? Yeah, so Rachel's definitely right. Like vet school can be extremely stressful. And I was out of state. I, my college, like I went to school in New York City. So I commuted back and forth. I was always surrounded by my big Italian family. They're like almost hard to get away from. Um, but I think one of the most important things you have to do is like set yourself up for success. So before moving to Gainesville, I looked at like, I, I always like love going on walks and going kayaking. And so I looked at like all the options that Gainesville had and like what was around. And there are so many nature trails. There's Payne's Prairie um, that has like alligators. I've seen bald eagles there. There's apparently bison, which I have never seen. I refuse to believe they exist, but I, I know they're out there. Um, but one of the things I did was I brought my kayak down with me from New York. I drove down here I put my kayak on top on top and um like honestly now that the weather's been great I feel like I've been I mean me and Charlie just went the other day we just went kayaking or hunting for some manatees we didn't find any but you know we did like two weeks ago so um there there's so much that that Gainesville has to offer and I think that overall just in veterinary medicine or when you're going in school just set yourself up for success so like if you know that there's something that you like to do research ahead see if you can find like what's like what's around and, and all that and then also just being from New York and away from my family, I just made sure that like, I set like either like an hour or or so like throughout the week, just to make sure that I can like talk to my family. And like, there's, there's always something going on at home, whether it's like a new christening or a birthday party or something. So I just was like, hey, let me FaceTime while everyone's there, pass me around that way, you know, I was able to still see everyone. And then, you know, other than that, like, I think that just let everyone know in your class how you feel. Like there are so many people that are going through the same things that like are also stressed. Like you're not alone in the boat. Everyone is there with you. So if you just open up and talk to everyone, I think you'll find that there's so much support around you without, um, you don't really have to go looking for anything. There, there's always something to do and someone there that's going through the same thing to help you out. 
Yeah, kind of on the same boat as Joey. I came from a big family that we were like always together. So that was one of the main reasons why I picked UF apart from in-state tuition, just the fact that I can drive home in five hours. And I did do that a lot, um, especially first year. I was kind of homesick, so I would be driving home like every other weekend. And that goes also with the time management uh, portion. Like I like having my weekends off so I can you know, either go visit family. I'm actually going to go drive to see my family that's came up to Ocala as soon as this is over. So I'm looking forward to that. Um, And just, you need to plan accordingly. Like I know I'm going to be with my family this weekend. So this week I made sure I got all my studying done, all the assignments done ahead of time so I could have the whole weekend off. And just on a daily, um, I also plan very much my days like to the hours so that I have enough time to like work out like two hours a day. Um, But everything can be done as long as you plan ahead and um, just give yourself some grace when things don't really go the way you planned for them to. Yeah, agreeing with them, vet school can be really hard. Before vet school, I never picked up an actual reading book. I was always just reading textbooks. And actually, I've been reading more books now than I've ever in my life. I like try to read one book at least, you know, a month, um, which has really helped me um, to de-stress and stuff just because I'm sometimes I don't like the hot weather and I don't want to go outside. Um, so I definitely agree with everything, you know, find your find your hobby, find your stress relief, um, because it's really important to help you get through vet school. And just a quick break, we are gonna post up another poll, um, if you all could take a second to answer it, just to get a little bit more about what you're interested in if you were gonna come into vet school. So, oh, great, thank you guys all for answering so quickly. Um, And as we're nearing the end of our webinar, I have one final question um, for our panelists. Um, What is one piece of advice that you wish someone gave you when you were applying to vet school? So Devon, you could go first and give us your answer. I have to find my mute button. All right. So um, I kind of cheated, honestly, because I always have two pieces of advice that I give to um, incoming students or, or, you know, hopeful students. And one of them, I think I already gave. Um, So that is just to reiterate a lot worth to your own experiences, regardless of how mundane they feel to you. Um, And, you know, whether it be being involved in the deaf community or whether it be being a cool forensics investigator guy, Um, or, you know, your experience uh, in terms of your background, um, make that experience known and don't, don't pass it off. Don't, don't, don't diminish your own experience um, and whatever background hardships, barriers you have overcome, because inevitably those are things that make you special, uh, that add competency to what you will become as a veterinarian um, and your interviewers will appreciate that. And also um, just like life advice uh, to learn now before getting into veterinary school um, is that rest is not a reward uh, for overworking yourself. Um, So make sure that you take time to establish habits that are well and healthy um, and not forcing yourself to the edge in order to reel yourself back in every single time. You know, we don't only fill our car tanks up when that empty light comes on. Um, so don't treat yourself like that poor, poor used vehicle. I love that advice, Devon. I'm gonna take that book, those both to heart. <laughs> um, I'm gonna cheat as well and say two really quick things. So one thing is kind of what I touched on in my intro is just being yourself. Um, you don't have to be a cookie cutter, like suit, you know, perfect imaginary person to get into vet school. Just be 100% yourself, and that's gonna give you the best chance to get wherever you want to go in life, whether that's vet school or somewhere else. Um, And then a little bit more sort of veterinary specific, I would say try to really explore veterinary medicine. There are so many facets of where this degree can take you. And we talked about a little bit of them today, Um, but go on like on YouTube and just type in like interesting veterinary careers. And, you know, you can find so many things. I came in um, my whole life. I wanted to only do equine medicine and then kind of right at the, right before I got into vet school and right um, at the beginning of vet school, I really fell in love with like farm animal medicine and realized how much I did love working 
working in small animal practices as a vet tech, and I've learned that mixed animal veterinary practice is totally a viable option. So there's a lot of paths that you can go down and just immerse yourself in as many veterinary experiences as you can, and that way you'll find the right path for you. Okay. Um, I kind of have two things too, but one of them is really short. So uh, the first one is imposter syndrome is very real and everyone has it and you're going to have it till forever. I have it still and it like goes away, comes back and my dog's scratching now and he didn't scratch the rest of the time. But um, yeah, so like imposter syndrome, you're going to have it. It's fine. It's totally fine. I came in with like such little animal experience that I was convinced everyone was already a veterinarian and I had zero. I had never pulled blood, didn't place a catheter. I've only watched people do it. And now I help teach a class where I help the newer students do that. So don't worry, you're, you're going to get to the same level that everyone else is. It's just going to be in different order and that's totally fine. And then my really quick other quick thing about advice is Whenever I'm like eating or cooking, I don't do anything with school because that's me time and I really love cooking and eating. And so I don't try to mix those two things. I mean, I love school too, but there's no need to, to do both at the same time. Okay, my thing is gonna be, hopefully all of you guys wanna come to UF and apply to UF, but um, when you're applying to vet schools, make sure you apply to somewhere that you actually want to live. I applied to a lot of schools, so I just want to make sure I got in. And for example, I applied to schools up north and I absolutely hate the snow. So I am glad that I am here. <laughs> My main thing would be is kind of what like Sarah Beth touched on also. It's just like, this isn't like a punch staple, like same thing as everyone applies. Like it's a very subjective journey that we all go through individually. So like, make sure to remember that this is your application process. This is your story. Don't get hung up on other people's. Like she got in the first time he got in whatever many times, like, remember, this is your experience and you got to make that the best experience possible. Because if not, like Joey said, imposter syndrome gets really real. This is a really like, it's a, it's a tough, like, you know, we're going to be doctors. So it's going to be, it's going to be tough, but you got to remember to do you focus on you and make sure you make yourself a priority in all this and don't get lost in the waves of like becoming a veterinarian and like you like obviously like vet school is a huge part of our lives but it's not everything about your life you got to remember to do you so that's my my main advice um so my advice really quickly because we're running out of time um before before her current job, my wife actually worked in dental admissions. Um, and so her advice that she wanted me to share with all of you is to, to reach out to Alex Avellino and then do what she says. Um, and I can tell you that that works really well because, um, you know, she can't get you into vet school, but she can help you figure out the best way for you to package yourself and to make adjustments. Um, and to meet the minimum requirements. You know, I was a non-traditional student, but here I am. So it's really, it's really good to talk to somebody. And let me tell you, it's really unusual. Not all the, the professional schools at UF have a full-time person that does what Alex does. So it's really, really remarkable um, that UF vet school has put the, the uh, resources into it. So please, please, please take advantage of that. Well, thank you all so much for your great advice. I hope it was helpful for all of our viewers. I want, want to once again, thank you all for coming. Um, I hope this was helpful. Thank you for all of our panelists for taking the time out on their Saturday. Thank you, Alex, for coming out and thank you for our closed captioner here um, and then Abner and Rachel for helping put this all together. Um, we hope this was help, helpful for you. And again, if you have any questions, please visit, visit our website um, and contact us. We're always here to help.